He wouldn't rape nobody for reals. It was it was a playful rape. That'll teach him to put his dick where it's not wanted. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact, it's science. Look it up. <laughs> Today we are jumping right back into r slash neckbeard stories because I can't get enough and you can't get enough and it's just so good to have some uh, nice cringe <laughs> first thing in your day. So that's what I'm going to do. We've got three very interesting stories including a gay neckbeard and a Gundam beard which is always weird. <laughs> I mean Gundam's pretty cool. I don't know why neckbeards had to ruin it. Because they ruin everything, I guess, is the answer to that. Anyways, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into these stories. Creepy adult neckbeard followed me around when I was young teen, demanding a hug. Two hours ago? Boy, that's fresh. <laughs> this took place years ago, when I was 14. I was helping a family member finish some drywall in a new addition they built in their house, and there were several people there, including my mother, a family friend, and the neckbeard in question, who was hired by said family friend. I'll refer to the neckbeard as Joey for the sake of the post. Joey was the typical greasy pseudo-intellectual college student at the time, and right off the bat he wouldn't stop following me around to talk to me. I just wanted to work in silence, and it soon got overwhelming trying to get the stuff done with this self-obsessed creep looming over me telling me about all the chicks he hooks up with in college and his crackpot theories about the universe. Instead of working, I kept trying to slip off and find a quiet place to hang out and play on my DS so I wouldn't have to deal with Joey. I did try telling my mother about what was going on, but she wasn't really paying attention, so it was clear that this was my problem to deal with. I don't think Joey ended up doing any of the work either, since he kept finding me and continuing the incredibly long-winded, one-sided conversation about how smart and interesting he was. Much of what he said was definitely very inappropriate to be saying to a 14 year old, and even at that age I recognized that this guy was a huge creep. At the end of the excruciatingly long day, when it was finally almost time to leave, he ramped up the creepiness to a whole new level. He asked, Could I have a hug? To which I replied, No. I've never liked people touching me. And even if that weren't the case, my lizard brain had been screaming at me to stay the hell away from him all day. But the neckbeard, of course, persisted undeterred. Come on, I'm not leaving without a hug. I said no again. And when he started walking towards me, I kept walking away to avoid him, telling him to back off. It was clear that he saw this as some fucked up sort of game, even though I wasn't laughing and I was internally freaking out. It got to the point where I felt so unsafe that I grabbed a pair of scissors off the table and wielded them like a weapon while telling this guy to get away from me. And this didn't seem to deter him either. It was like a slow chase. After what felt like about a half an hour of this weird game of cat and mouse, Joey and the family friend finally left. Without getting that hug, of course. What really sticks with me is how I voiced my discomfort to all the other adults several times, and no one really listened. Only in hindsight, a few years after the incident, when I brought it up again, did my mother say something like, Wow, you should have told me. I would have kicked his ass. Except, I did tell her. Multiple times. And she failed to step in and protect me. I'm grateful that I was able to defend my own boundaries, otherwise something much worse could have happened. And I would have been on my own. TLDR. Jesus Christ, OP. <laughs> that... That is wild. Who is this family friend and why is he hanging out with like people who are obviously pedophiles? Good lord. Some sort of friend, isn't he? I find it interesting that your mom was able to like rewrite history in her own brain and be like, oh my god, I would have protected you. Because we always want to think that we'll do the right thing in the moment, but it's only when the moment actually occurs that the truth is revealed. And really, your, your mom is maybe sort of neglectful? I hate to put that label on it, but uh, that's the way it sounds. Additionally, as a final thought, I just want to say that I really don't like touching strangers. Even shaking hands with people that I've just met makes me extremely uncomfortable. It's like, I don't know where your hands have been. I don't know where your body has been, what sort of diseases you're carrying. You know what I mean? And a hug is like 
a handshake only 10 times worse. <laughs> no, no, not going to happen. I try not to hug anybody. I try to also avoid shaking hands. I just give a small wave. I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> How are you? Luckily, I've never had to wield scissors at anybody to get them to uh, stop trying to hug me or whatever. Good God. Glad you got out of the situation, OP. But yeah, that's that's some creepy stuff right there. Classic neckbeard fair. Anyways, let's get into the next story. Gay neckbeard only wants young men. Oh yeah, gay beard. My friend Mike is generally a good person, but he is a neckbeard. A gay neckbeard. Yes, the stereotype of fastidious, fashion-obsessed gay man is in fact just a stereotype. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being gay, full stop, but neckbeards is still neckbeards. <laughs> What frustrates me about Mike is that he's almost 40 years old, but is only attracted to young men. He weighs over 350 pounds, is lazy, he smells, has graying hair, bad teeth, bad skin, and lives paycheck to paycheck. A sad story already. He complains about being lonely and depressed, but seemingly has no interest in dating within his own age and tier. He has brief hookups on Grinder, and then laments that none of them want to start a long-term relationship. Because you a pig, Mike. <laughs> in his 20s, Mike also had a history of having sex with straight men in relationships with women. This happened quite a lot, so it's funny to me to think how many straight butch men in the world have had gay sex secretly, but never told anybody. Most of them are politicians. <laughs> then Mike would later be upset that that guy wouldn't leave his girlfriend for him. A few years back, when Mike was in his 30, he had a neighbor named Harry. Harry was just one year underage, but Mike befriended him, and says that it was Harry who made the first move and expressed interest in having a relationship. Mike at least waited until Harry's birthday to begin sexual activity. Harry's dad didn't like Mike being around his son, for obvious reasons. <laughs> or maybe it's because he thought it was strange that this creepy 30-year-old enjoyed being around his younger son and was very obviously attracted to him. Oh wait, no. It's because the dad is homophobic, and Harry wanting to be with Mike got Harry kicked out of his house, putting the young man in a very precarious position. They eventually broke up after Harry made a false claim of rape against Mike to the police. Or at least, I think it was false. Lord. Since Mike is my friend, I've chosen to believe him when he says that he didn't do anything. That might be a mistake, OP. The claim did not go anywhere, and Mike says Harry apologized for lying a couple of years later. I can't think of any motivation that Harry would have to make a false rape claim, unless his father put him up to it, or Harry decided he wasn't gay anymore, or wasn't sure that he was. I don't know what happened to Harry, or if he's still gay. I tried to explain to Mike that regardless of what happened, what he did was maybe sort of grooming? Mike obviously doesn't see it that way, and thinks that he was helping Harry by being there for him to talk about Harry's gay feelings since Harry lived in a homophobic home. <laughs> because Mike's my friend, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Ever since then, Mike says that he's always been sure to check if a guy is of age before starting anything with them, but it creeps me out that it even has to be a question. One of the guys he hooks up with on Grinder lives with his mom, and when he goes over there for sex, they have to do it, like, quietly. Like, what kind of actually grown adult has to do that? Mike and I are still friends, but his personal life choices continue to annoy me as he continues pining for young men way out of his league and then whines about being alone. I'm not gay at all, so I don't know what it's like in the community. Is Mike's situation normal? My instincts say it's not. I mean, this would be creepy if we were talking about a hetero neckbeard, right? OP, I'm just gonna say that you're right, neckbeards is neckbeards. And I think that if this was a hetero neckbeard who was grooming a young girl, then you probably wouldn't have a problem calling it out and cutting ties. But for some reason, because he's gay, you're doing all these sort of mental gymnastics to justify his behavior and stay as his friend, when it really doesn't seem like you should, in my opinion. It sounds to me like that younger guy was just, you know, trying to explore his sexual options and then... Mike obviously took this thing too far because the young guy, like, <laughs> accused him of rape, which, as you said, he doesn't seem to have a reason to, so it probably did actually happen, and you're 
just going out of your way to try and justify it. Like, ah, Mike's a good guy. He wouldn't rape nobody for reals. It was, it was a playful rape. <laughs> what the fuck? That'll teach him to put his dick where it's not wanted. Like scrumping for apples. I think that, uh, you know, older guys and younger men, or older guys and younger women, it tends to happen a lot, but usually the older guy is rich. So if Mike is really going to go down this path and refuses to settle for anybody uh, around his own age, then he just needs to get rich <laughs> or die trying. <laughs> uh, this is a really creepy story. Creepier than the first one, even, I think. But we got one more story, and it's a beefy one, and then I'm going to get out of here. The Tale of Gundam Beard. Hello everyone, first time poster here. I've been really into watching Reddit videos on YouTube lately, such as Tim Tim Tom, Vinci, Noble Xenon, R Slash, Fun with Failure, and that new up and comer, Red X, who's like, you know, totally cool and stuff. <laughs> wow, that's super kind of you, OP. Thanks a lot. <laughs> While I do things such as clean my room or paint, and hearing everyone's experiences finally gave me the courage to make an account and share my own. This story takes place when I enter college, so it's been about six years since it happened, so the details are a little bit fuzzy. TLDR is at the bottom. P.S. Sorry if the formatting is bad, as I'm on mobile. Anyways, let's meet the star of today's show! For safety and privacy reasons, everyone's names will be changed. OP, Faith, 17 at the time, dyed black hair, glasses, extremely introverted, and could be considered neckbeard bait. Short, curvy, gothic, big into anime, video games, and cosplay. Gundam Beard, GB, your average neckbeard. Always looked dirty, a beard that was like only half an inch from connecting to his chest. Always wore the same Minecraft shirt to class every day. Didn't know the meaning of personal space or what a boundary line was. Mason, my older brother. Extremely protective, karate expert, loves wrestling, always willing to listen, and offer that oh-so-wise advice. Mason's a great name. One of my buddies in Discord is named Mason. You might see him in the comments. Keep an eye out. <laughs> Phoenix, close friend of mine and Mason's. Big teddy bear of a man. 6'4", big into Vikings. Plays a minor role in this story. Link is the mother hen of the group, who's actually a 6'5", mountain of a man. <laughs> the oldest of our little squad, and was always the ride to anywhere that we wanted to go. Big fan of Legend of Zelda. Now let's get into the story. I'm from a little town with a small technical college right beside the high school. The fall after I graduated high school, I was homeschooled, I started to the college under a criminal justice major. We were mostly known for just cosmetology, welding, and nursing, and none of those were a fit for me since I suck at hair and makeup, needles make me anxious, and nobody ever trusted me with a welding torch. <laughs> the first day of class I noticed this guy staring at me. At first, I shrugged it off and kept listening to the lecture. It was a math class, and I'll be the first to admit that I suck at math. Always have. I sat down in the front so I could get out of the door easier when the class was over, and who sat but only two seats down? You guessed it, Gundam Beard. I thought the looks were just the judgmental looks that I was used to. Boy, I was wrong. After we were let out, I immediately left and headed out of the building since it was my last class for the day. And so began two years of absolute hell. Fast forward to Thursday, and today my teacher was late, of course. So I took the time to run to the student lounge and get myself a soda and some pizza-flavored bootleg cheese puffs to combat my horrible blood sugar spikes and headed back to the classroom. I get there, and who was standing against the wall? Smelling like B.O. and a cheap car exhaust? <laughs> Gundam Beard. He noticed my supernatural lantern that I kept on my ID, and then saw the anime pins that I had stuck to it. I see you too like anime. He said, kind of startling me, because nobody really talked to me. Oh yeah, I've been really into watching Yu-Gi-Oh! and Black Butler recently, I replied, just trying to be nice, not really wanting to spark up a conversation. Like I said, I'm extremely introverted. Also, I had some pretty bad anxiety, and any awkward social interaction will kind of give me the shakes and light wheezing. He then pointed to my shirt, a retro-style wrestling shirt from the show Fall Brawl. My mom got it for me since it had a skull on it. You like wrestling? He asked. Great. Uh, a little? 
Seeing his face was confused by my short answers, he said, That's not my style. I'm in the Gundam, he answered. To this day, I still don't know what it is. Oh, okay, I replied, seeing my teacher coming. I hated this teacher woman, but in that moment, I absolutely loved her. You should come over later and we can watch Gundam together, Gundam Beard told me. I didn't even know this guy's name. Sorry, I have homework and I don't really know you, I replied. I felt like I was about to have a panic attack and started scurrying into class. Later that day, I get a friend request on Facebook and see an unfamiliar name. I saw that we had lots of mutual friends, so I accepted. I had friended a lot of people from college just to keep up with courses. Then I get a message, instantly. It was Gundam Beard. I'd never told him my name. Our roll call was just us signing our names onto a piece of paper, and my signature is barely readable. At the time, my profile picture wasn't even one of myself, so how did he find me? Hello, my lady, the message said. Yep, he said it. <laughs> I ignored it the first time, and then he just kept messaging me, until finally I said, Oh, hey, you're the guy from math, I replied. I don't remember all the details from the conversation, but I do remember that all he wanted to talk about was going out and anime. <laughs> At that moment, I made a mental note to make sure that I didn't wear any anime shirts to class, ever. He waited by the door every single class just to talk to me. And when I say waited to talk, I mean get me stuck in the hallway by standing in front of the closed door and always making me late. I finally started telling him that he needed to move so I could get to class because I needed to hear all of the lecture that I could. This just led to him wanting to tutor me. If I came to his house, again, of course, I always said no. Guys, this went on from September of 2014 to May of 2015 until summer break. Oh, the joy of not having to see this creep. But the messages on Facebook still continued. In the summer of 2015, I had to have surgery to remove my tonsils and adenoids and wasn't able to talk for at least a week. So I mostly just played video games with Mason, Phoenix, and Link. We all decided to play Black Ops 3 in a private Capture the Flag lobby. Since I couldn't talk, Mason was my voice. The whole time we were playing, my phone was blowing up with messages from Gundam Beard. Apparently he found out that I had surgery and said that I needed someone to take care of me. Gundam Beard, I had a TNA. I can't talk. I don't need anyone at my house. I'm just trying to game with my friends. Please leave me alone. I messaged before getting back into the game. Mason was playing as the Hives, and I was playing Overdrive. Around 20 minutes later, my mom comes in and says, Faith, um, you have a visitor, she said. What? I hadn't invited anyone over. Other than Phoenix and Link, I didn't have any friends that actually came over. It was too late for my grandparents to come by, so I just shrugged and shook my head to her. And then I heard it. Hey, Faith! <laughs> I heard that nails on a chalkboard voice say as the color visibly drained from my face. It was, you guessed it, of course, Gundam Beard. One, I told him to leave me alone. And two, I never told this guy where I lived. Mason explained what was going on to Phoenix and Link while I was on the verge of having a panic attack. Gundam Beard ended up taking over my game since I couldn't speak, headset and all. My mom said that my grandparents wanted to see me since they lived right next door, so I left and went with her. We went to my grandparents and explained, so they let us hide out. My mom then asked me why I had invited Gundam Beard over, and that's when it hit me. He had lied to my parents just to come to my house. I got my phone out and typed out to her what had actually happened. Now, my mom is a really sweet woman, but if you mess with her babies, she's like a mama bear. She was pissed. I got another message and saw this time it was from Phoenix. Hey Faith, you okay? He asked as I explained the situation. Phoenix asked if I needed him to come get rid of Gundam Beard, and I said that Mason could handle it and I didn't want him to waste an hour round trip and gas just to scare this loser off, but if I needed him to please keep his phone close. At least two hours later, I finally get the good news from Mason. Hey Faith, Gundam Beard finally left. You can come home now. I told him that he had to leave, he said. Thank goodness. I messaged Phoenix just so he wouldn't end up wasting a trip anyways. 
Over the summer, I just ignored every message Gundam Beard sent. So then he started to send me gifts. Thankfully, my mom said I couldn't have visitors every single time. She was my hero. Finally, I decided that I was going to make him leave me alone in person. When classes resumed in the fall, I'd made a new friend. We'll call her Braid, since she always wore her hair in a braid whenever I saw her. I had explained the whole situation to her, and she was just as creeped out about it as I was. When we walked into class, we saw Gundam Beard with his desk sitting right up against the one beside him, which of course, just so happened to be mine. No way I was sitting there again. So I sat in the very far back corner behind Braid. After class, Gundam Beard came up to me again. Hey, Faith. I sent you gifts over the summer, but you never replied to me on Facebook. Yeah, it's fine though. We could talk about it over lunch. He said as I gripped the strap of my messenger bag. Gundam Beard, you showed up at my house uninvited, lied to my parents, and I never even told you where I live. It's creepy, and I don't like it at all. I don't want to date, I just want to be left alone, so please respect my wishes. I don't want a boyfriend, I'm only here for my degree, and even if I did want a boyfriend, I wouldn't want some creep that stalks me and lies to my family. I told him, quickly scurrying to my dad's car in the parking lot. Over the next few weeks, I kept noticing a car driving past my house. It wasn't too hard to figure out who it belonged to, since the car was Gundam Beard's Facebook profile pic. I unfriended him on Facebook, stopped replying to any messages, and I never left class alone. This went on until I was finally transferred to a different math class and blocked him on Facebook. I later found out that he would hit his mother and threatened to burn down his own house for not getting his way. <laughs> Fucking psycho. I saw him again at the cosplay convention a year later, but thankfully I had Mason and Phoenix with me. Mason was dressed as Toby from Naruto, Phoenix was Ghost Rider, and I was cosplaying as Laura Croft, so I was able to hide and didn't actually have to deal with him. I graduated from college with my degree as part of the Honor Society three years later, and am currently doing much better and I should be moving soon. Thank you all for taking the time to read this adventure. I have more weird neckbeard stories if you guys are interested. I hope you all have a wonderful and neckbeard free day, <laughs> ladies and gents. TLDR. I think you should definitely post some more stories, OP. I'd be glad to read them. I'm hungry for these well-written neckbeard stories. No, no more walls of text, please. <laughs> please and thank you. If you know how to construct a sentence, it makes narrating it that much easier. So, fantastic job. <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to tell Gundam Beard off, and I'm glad that he took no for an answer, kind of. <laughs> At least compared to how it usually goes with neckbeards, you know. I'm still curious how he found out your Facebook profile and address and stuff. Maybe he was talking to one of your friends, you know, and then you need to have a talk with that friend and be like, don't. Don't give out my information ever. It's called operational security, and I need everybody's cooperation in this matter. I'm also curious what happened to the gifts, you know? You probably should have returned them to sender, something like that, to really drive the message home. If you accepted the gifts, that might be why he's like, oh, she's, she still wants to talk to me, you know what I mean? It's a trap. <laughs> never accept gifts from a neckbeard. It never ends well. But you know what I think ended kind of well, at least a little bit, <laughs> this video. I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy, friends. Check out the link swarm that I have down in the description. We got Twitter, Discord, PayPal, Facebook, Patreon. And of course, I always want to thank my oh-so-generous patrons, Damon Darkstar, Lady Nix, Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Robert Waits, Just Austin, and Barlos Bugo. You guys are absolute heroes, helping me to live the dream. And I definitely, definitely appreciate it. US dollars go pretty far in the Philippines. Whoop whoop. <laughs> As always, if you can donate, it's appreciated. If not, no pressure. I just appreciate you being here today. And I hope that you will be here tomorrow as well. In order to do so, you will need to keep yourself safe out there. So wear your mask, wash your hands, do the thing. But just as importantly as keeping yourself safe is keeping yourself sane. So please take some time to do something that you enjoy today because you are worthy, you are loved, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you in the next one, friends, and until then, bye-bye.